Now we're going to take a look at trying to differentiate the inverse trig function. So we've just reviewed the inverse trig functions. If you didn't watch that video, please go back and watch it. Um, but now we're going to work on finding their derivatives. So here are the derivatives of the six inverse trigonometric functions. And I do want to point out to you that if you know the derivative of arc sine, you also know the derivative of arc cosine because arc cosine is just the negative. So all of the cos are negative, just as we're used to from before. If I know the derivative of arc tangent, I know the derivative of arc cotangent. And arc secant, I know arc cosecant. And again, these are just something that you want to memorize or just have in front of you. Um, I just have them in front of me, honestly, as I work so that I know how to fit the pattern. Let's take a look at a couple of practice questions. And as you can see, I've already provided you those functions uh, down at the bottom so that we don't have to refer back to any of our notes. For our first question, we have y equals arc cosine of 3x plus 1. Finding the derivative is just as easy as identifying u and u prime. So in this case, u is 3x plus 1 because that is what I'm taking the arc cosine of, and that's what it tells me to do. U prime is the derivative of 3x plus 1, which is 3. Now keep in mind we're differentiating, so we're not trying to fit a pattern or anything like that. This says take negative u prime, so y prime is equal to negative u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u. u is a function, 3x plus 1, quantity squared. This is all I would do for this question. So all I did was identify u, identify u prime. Notice I didn't substitute. If I would have substituted, I would have been substituting as y equals arc cosine of u, and then y prime is equal to negative u prime divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. But gosh, I've already got that below, and I'm kind of lazy. So don't show that work unless your instructor tells you to. And if I'm your instructor, I'm telling you don't. For the second question, um, this one's a little bit harder, not because the arc tangent function is more difficult, but because this is obviously a product. So not only am I going to use this derivative, but I have to use the product rule. Remember the product rule says I'm going to take the first function times the derivative of the second function. And then I'm going to add the second function uh, times the derivative of the first function. Now, typically, I wouldn't write that first step, but just to make sure we're clear on what we're doing, I did write it for you. So y prime is equal to x squared. And then what's happening here? This is the derivative of arc tangent of 2x. So u is uh, 2x squared, u prime is 4x. So that's going to give me u prime, which is 4x, divided by 1 plus u squared. u squared is 2x squared squared. Now, if you want to go ahead and write that as 4x to the fourth, you sure can. I'm not going to at this point. Next, I've got arc tangent of 2x squared multiplied by the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. So now I'm just going to simplify. I've got 4x to the third power divided by 1 plus 4x to the fourth power, and then plus 2x arc, uh, I forgot to write tangent, sorry about that, arc tangent of 2x squared. And honestly, I wouldn't do anything more than that. I would leave it just like that. Take a look at these two practice questions on your own. And when you are ready, press play to see how you did. For the first question, again, all I'm looking at is what is 2x squared? That is u. So what is u prime? u prime is the derivative of that, which is 4x. Now, all I'm doing is plugging it into the function. 
I'm saying that y prime is equal to u prime, which is 4x, divided by 1 plus u squared. So that gives me y prime is 4x divided by 1 plus 4x to the fourth. And that's it. For my second question, I have u is equal to e to the x, which means u prime was the derivative of e to the x, which, as we know, is e to the x. So now I have y prime is equal to, again, just using the, the pattern, negative u prime, so negative e to the x, divided by the absolute value of u, which is e to the x, and then the square root of u squared, so e to the x, quantity squared, minus 1. Doing a little bit of cleanup, obviously in my denominator, this is going to be e to the 2x, but the question is, can I do anything about this? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. In this case, yes, we know e to the x is always going to be positive, and then this is negative e to the x, so I actually can cancel these out and just leave a negative 1 here. Again, only because there's not going to be anything happening with the sign. e to the x is either 0 or a positive value. It's never negative. So before that reason, it's okay for me to cancel these out and leave me with negative 1. And then this is the square root of e to the 2x minus 1. So this would be my final solution. Keep in mind that our focus in Chapter 5 has been to learn about how to differentiate or integrate all the transcendental functions that we didn't look at when we were first learning how to differentiate or integrate. Um, knowing that, we can still use the derivative in the same way that we did back in Chapter 2 and Chapter 3. In this case, we can find the relative extrema of a function um, by finding the derivative of the function. So let's do that here. If you feel comfortable doing it yourself, feel free. If not, stick with me. I'm going to find the derivative of our function y. So the derivative of arc sine of x is just u prime. In this case, that would be 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus u squared. So that would be 1 minus x squared. And then the derivative of minus 2x is minus 2. I need to know when that equals 0. So 0 is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus x squared minus 2. Add 2 to each side. I would multiply by 1 minus x squared on each side. Divide by 2. I would square each side. And then I would subtract 1. So negative x squared is negative 3 fourths. Um, I would obviously negate each side. So x squared is positive 3 fourths. And x must be plus or minus the square root of 3 fourths, which is the same as plus or minus radical 3 over 2. So those are my critical numbers. Now, we also know that critical numbers are where the function is undefined. And so other critical numbers, we might say, include negative 1 and positive 1, because if I plugged in a negative or positive 1, my denominator would be 0. However, if you think back to arcsine and what the domain and range of that function are, we know that the domain is from negative 1 to positive 1. So even though these values would result in a problem, that's okay because that's the end of our interval. So really it's implied that the interval of this function is from negative 1 to positive 1. So I don't have to deal with the negative 1 and the positive 1. So now when I make my domain and split it up, I'm going to go from negative 1 to negative radical 3 over 2. I'm going to go from negative radical 3 over 2 to positive radical 3 over 2. And then I'm going to go from positive radical 3 over 2 to positive 1. And then I'm going to use a test point. I find plus minus plus. So what does that tell me? That tells me, yes, this is not monotonic. This is going to increase and decrease. So that gives me the max 
would occur when we go from increasing to decreasing. So the max is at negative radical 3 over 2. And the min is where it goes from decreasing to increasing. So the min is that positive radical 3 over 2. And to find those y values, remember, I'm just going to take these values and plug them back into the original function. So in doing that, I get pi divided by 3 plus radical 3. And I get pi divided by 3 minus radical 3. Coming up next, the logical next step, of course, of finding the integral of an inverse trig function.